I, I'm with you. I can't. This is my favorite time of year. Well, this isn't my favorite time of year, but when we get there in a month, it is my favorite time of year because you get to see what's going on in the, in the conference and, and nationally. And it's uh, an exciting time of year for you guys as well as the Blue Ribbon College Football Preview book's going to be coming out here within a matter of days. But let's start with what's going on at Ohio State today, and that is the Buckeyes uh, answered the notice of allegations issued with a response to the NCAA probation for a couple of years, no scholarship production, and no self-imposed postseason bowl ban. What do you think? Well, they're not done, honestly. I, I think the NCAA is going to say, that's great. We appreciate what you did. We're glad you gave back the wins from last year. But bottom line, you're going to get you're going to get hit harder than that. I, I've said all along, and I, I believe this to be true, I think Ohio State will get a, a, at least a one- or two-year bowl ban, and I think scholarship reductions. And, and it's unfortunate because the people that really did a lot of this aren't going to be there. And you're going to punish Luke Fickle and, and, the, and the kids returning, but that's just the nature of this business. It's the only way to do it. So I think they will get very some penalties very similar to what happened to Southern Cal with, with the Reggie Bush deal. All right, that makes sense. Let me ask you about Luke Fickle just from afar. You live in Champaign and cover Illinois on a day-to-day basis along with covering the Big Ten. But, you know, you follow college football. You follow Big Ten football. Your view on how Luke Fickle's handled himself thus far as Ohio State's head coach is what? You know, I didn't love his first press conference, the big first press conference, but everything I've heard since then has been terrific. I, I heard him on a, on a national radio show uh, a week or so ago, and he just sounded great. He sounded like he's, he's taken control, and, and I don't think any of us know what we would do in his circumstance. It's it's. And un- un- there's never been anything like this, really. A guy that's been brought in as the interim initially, and now he's got the team for a year. I certainly expect the team to rally around him. And everything you've heard about him as a coach is has been outstanding. Great recruiter, outstanding on the field. Uh, players love him, that kind of stuff. So I really think he's, he's basically he's got a one year audition, and enough, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he comes in. They win nine or ten games. They say, hey, you know what? Let's, let's stick with you because you're an Ohio State guy and, and, and you've done it the right way, and let, let's go from here. I, I really think it makes a lot of sense to have him continue on if, if, they go, if they go well this season, and I think things could go well. Blue Ribbon College Football Yearbook reporter Bob Osmussen joining us here on 97.1 The Fan as we talk a little Big Ten football and, and preview the season. It's a little bit of a rough schedule for Ohio State, though. They, you know, they have to play Wisconsin. They've got to go on the road to Nebraska. They've got to play at Miami. Where, where is the bar set? Is it at nine wins, you think? I think nine is a real good number, and I think a lot of people, when all the stuff happened at Ohio State, I'm talking about people across the conference sort of thought incorrectly that, okay, Ohio State's done. You know, this is going to be a six-win season. I don't believe that for a second. First of all, there's a, there's still a boatload of talent on that team, and we know that. And uh, they're going to get an infusion of talent after five games, too. It's going to be like uh, bringing up some guys from liners or something. So it's really, I, I don't think, uh, although the schedule's tough, like you pointed out, it's not overwhelming. And, and if Ohio State goes to Miami and wins, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. If they go to Nebraska and win, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Wisconsin, I believe, comes to Columbus. So that's, a, that's a certainly a good chance for, for the Buckeyes, too. So. I think you, I really like Ohio State's team coming back. I would have loved it with Terrell Fryer and Jim Trussell, but I still like the team. Uh, Blue Ribbon has them at 18th nationally. I think that's very fair, and uh, I think nine wins is, is, should be should happen. Really, uh, again, you hope that when the penalty phase comes out from the NCAA, that doesn't wipe out the momentum of this team. But I got a feeling Luke Trick, Luke Pickle will stay on top of these guys, and the coaches will stay with them, and, and the players will be motivated, and, and they'll go. All right, enough about Ohio State. We got a good few minutes on them, and I appreciate your insights on that. Let's talk more conference issues right now. Who is the best team in the Big Ten preseason? It's one of two, but, okay. but I think Russell, Russell Wilson at this point has to put Wisconsin over the top. I really, I like them honestly. Uh, before all the Ohio State stuff came down, I liked Wisconsin to still win that division. I really liked a lot of what was going on there. Then they get, then they get this terrific player who's apparently fitting in very well with the team. Uh, they're pretty well set up, and I really like Wisconsin. And I, I, the other team, I think Nebraska is going to be very good in the first year. But you have to learn from the past, and, and the past shows us that Penn State did not come in and dominate. When, they, when everybody thought they would. And I think uh, Nebraska's got some issues. Uh, offense could be some question marks there. Defense should be real good. But those two teams are the two best teams in the league at this point. Talking again to Bob Osmussen from Blue Urban College Football Yearbook, joining us here on 97.1 The Fan. Uh, what about Russell Wilson? I mean, he's a great quarterback. He's obviously a phenomenal athlete. I guess the only question in my mind would be, can he come in and gel right away? Because he's never played with these guys at Wisconsin before. Exactly, and is there any resentment? You know, did, did the quarterbacks that were 
were going to compete for that job, did they have some buddies on the team that represent them? I, I think bottom line on all this stuff is winning. And I think that, that if you're a Wisconsin player, you have to view – he had a choice. He could have gone to Auburn and, and some other possibilities, and, and he picked you. So he saw the opportunity not just to improve his own situation but also to help the team win. And I think he wants to win at a high level. I've heard he's a good teammate, and I think that's critical. But there could be some issues. Uh, Brett Bielema, you look at what he's done in his time, they're uh, pretty amazing given the – the circumstance, it, could, it didn't have to work like this, and it has. So I think he'll make him fit in, allow him to fit in. And I think it sounds like Russell Wilson is there and ready to roll. So, yeah, I really like the pay. It's, it, again, it's like it's like signing a player, tr- making a trade from a, a lower team late in the season and adding a big bat or something. I mean, it's just, although in this case, not a big bat because apparently he couldn't hit. <laughs> sure. But uh, Russell, Wilson's a, Russell Wilson's an outstanding football player who's just going to make Wisconsin better. Point well taken. All right, do you think Wilson will be the best quarterback in the conference, or will it be Kirk Cousins or somebody? else well uh, and I, I like Kirk Cousins a lot and I picked him as the best quarterback in the conference I caught a lot of heat for that uh, you have to start with Denard Robinson I think based on what he did last year now does he fit into the system with Brady Hoke I don't think we know that yet I think the assumption is that, that he can and I like quarterbacks that run for 1300 yards and, and are able to throw the ball down the field so he's terrific uh, honestly a kid in Illinois Nathan Fieldhouse they had a really good freshman year and is just getting better so he's going to be a good player across the board uh, there, there's some good quarterbacks in the conference, but but I think Russell Wilson certainly in the top couple, and and Kirk Cousins has to be considered. And Taylor Martinez in Nebraska again got off to a great start as a redshirt freshman last year, ran into some midseason trouble, but sounds like he's doing very well in Nebraska this year. Yeah, we forget about the Huskers that addition to the conference. That's going to add an interesting dynamic to the Big Ten this year. Yeah, absolutely, and I think uh, I think the one thing Big Ten Big Ten fans will appreciate is the passion that Nebraska fans have for their program, and that is really the only thing to do in that state. And that they acknowledge that they kind of point it point to it with pride. They think it's a good they think it's a good deal. And what will really be interesting is the first few times Nebraska goes to uh, visit Big Ten schools and how many fans they bring. Now there will be places, and there's there's legendary stories about them taking half the seats at Notre Dame for a game several years ago. So I think they will invade. Uh, you won't be able to tell in Columbus because everybody will be in red. But but uh, I think they will invade uh, visiting stadiums. They'll fill a lot of those seats, and, and uh, their fans will gain a quick, quick reputation. One thing I do know about Nebraska at home, despite uh, the size of the crowd and, and how fervent they are about their team, they're also extremely respectful to the opponent. And I think they will do that at uh, I think they will do that to the Big Ten to show a sign of respect. I think they'll be very nice. I think people will come away from Lincoln going, wow, uh, good deal. We're glad they're in the league. Really looking forward to seeing, especially the Buc- guys play Nebraska obviously but the rivalries that develop with Nebraska in the Big Ten we're talking to Bob Osmussen he is a reporter for Blue Ribbons College Football Yearbook joining us here on 97.1 the fan what about a team in the conference that's maybe flying a little under the radar there are a lot of teams in this Big Ten that you know might get six seven wins and if things break the right way they could they could look at eight or nine wins in a New Year's Day or a, I guess this year January 2nd bowl game is there one that would stand out to you well not to be uh uh, with paternal or whatever the whatever that term is, the team I cover, frankly, is a team. Illinois is a team that, that could win eight or nine games. They've got eight home games, which is unprecedented, and they've got a lot of good players back, including Nathan Shieldhouse. Uh, they, they seem to be going in the right direction in terms of where the coaches are, uh, and I think that they've got the ability to win eight or nine. Their key games, they, they they have a nice schedule at the start of the season, but they have a string of games toward the end of the year where they you know, have to have to go play at Penn State, uh, welcome Ohio State to town, uh, Wisconsin visits, Michigan visits. So they've they've got a good schedule. Uh, there is some pressure. Uh, uh, they've got a new athletic director coming. They haven't named them yet, and there is some pressure. And I think there's a, a thought that out there that if that if things don't go well. Ron Zook could have some issues, but I don't. I don't see that happening. I think. I think he's set up to win eight or nine games and, and have himself a nice bowl season. Great stuff, Bob. We got what Big Ten football media days now a couple weeks away, and then training camp, and the season will be here in under two months. What a great time of year, isn't it? Yeah, can't wait for it. It's just an unbelievable, like you said, it's an unbelievable time of the year. And uh, Big Ten media will really be interesting again because, like you pointed out, Nebraska's new. We'll get to see some of their people and listen to Bo Pelini and uh, Bo's pretty much straight shooter. I think people there know him pretty well and. Uh, it, he'll be interesting. I look forward to seeing him alive. Thanks for your time as always, Bob. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Anytime. Okay.